More brains! Ever wonder where that ever popular zombie horror trope comes from? Well, wonder no more, because it is the subject of this week's retrospective. So let's take a look back at The Return of the Living Dead. Which is a 1985 American comedy horror film directed by Dan O'Bannon and is also a sequel to Night of the Living Dead. So how the hell did we end up getting two sequels that spawned separate highly influential cult film franchises that have gone on to define zombie horrors to this day from the one movie? Let's start at the very beginning as always. John Russo co-wrote Night of the Living Dead with Romero, but they parted ways with each other after that film had wrapped, with Russo retaining the rights to use the moniker The Living Dead, whereas Romero was free to use the concepts they had created in any future films he may want to go on and make using the dead as a moniker which he eventually did making Dawn of the Dead and its four sequels with several remakes and 12 unauthorised sequels and or remakes also having been produced of this series. As it turns out, Russo was a prolific author and that is where the original genesis of this particular film lies with his book of the same name. Originally, Russo and his producer Tom Fox planned to bring the book to the big screen via 3D, which was a craze in the early to mid 80s, believe it or not, with Toby Hooper in the director's chair, he of Life Force fame, another movie I covered on this channel last year. Dan O'Bannon, the eventual director, was actually brought in to give the script a bit of polish and ended up being offered the director gig when Hooper backed out to go and direct Life Force instead. He accepted on the one condition he could give the script a major overhaul to differentiate this series from that of Romero's Dead series, saying that it was too much of a serious attempt at making a sequel to the original, and he did not want to intrude so directly on Romero's turf. He rewrote the film to occur in a fictional universe where Night of the Living Dead is a movie based on true events, with more humour up to the point where it only superficially resembled the novel. The Return of the Living Dead was a moderate commercial success on release, earning back $14.23 million on a budget of $4 million, but it went on to earn far greater re rave reviews Critically, with that man Roger Ebert again pontificating that the film is kind of a sensation machine made out of the usual ingredients and the real question is whether it's done with style. It is. I agree wholeheartedly here, this is a far less serious movie than last week's fair with very little to say, but it does have buckets of punk style, gore, camp and comedy to make up for that. I am a massive fan of horror comedies, so I really appreciate the direction this movie went in to differentiate it from Romero's series that is a mix of social commentary, sometimes humour and horror. I think a straight sequel to Night of the Living Dead without Romero's genius for blending the horror with social satire would probably have failed to have hit the right note with me. One thing that always hits the spot for me is Linnea Quigley and she probably gives her most infamous performance of her career here. Stripping, then dancing full frontally nude on top of a gravestone about 20 minutes in, before being naked for the rest of the film's 90 minute runtime. I first watched this as a fairly young person, and for three decades now I have always thought she was full frontally nude. Turns out VHS and old TV hid a multitude of sins because researching this movie I discovered that at first she was and in fact showed pubic hair. However, producer Graham Henderson visited the shoot that day through a temper tantrum and told Dan O'Bannon that you can't show pubic hair on television. So they sent her away and told her to shave the area in question which is the part Linnea herself found embarrassing, apparently. Then whilst doing another take, Graham Henderson cried out, Oh God, it's even worse, you can see everything. At this point, they sent her over to Bill Muntz and William Stout, where they made a crotch piece and glued it on. So she isn't in fact fully naked at all. In her own words, she is like a department store mannequin. 
The nude scene absolutely encapsulates and sums up this movie's manic punk energy and style that is exuded throughout, more than complemented by the amazing soundtrack, which features several legendary LA-based punk bands of the mid-80s. It absolutely matches the pace, energy and style of the action on screen. The zombies themselves are really well done, and were based on bog people from Wales and desiccated mummies from Mexico, being a mixture of puppetry, makeup, costumes and practical effects, meaning they have aged well and don't look too ridiculous and in parts are very gross looking. This picture did however popularise various zombie tropes in the popular imagination, with it being the first to have zombies eat brains and groan brains as they shuffle along. It was also the first appearance of zombies being able to run, talk and be capable of a modicum of intelligent thought and planning rather than just possessing base animal instincts. All tropes that are more or less fairly normalised in modern zombie horrors, even if they are all mainly played for laughs here. The cast are absolutely playing this entirely for laughs and seemingly perfectly aware of what they are making, so their goofy acting, scenery chewing and general over the top style perfectly mesh with the film's tone and comedic stylings. James Caron as Frank and Clue Gulliger as Bert are the obvious standouts. All of the above combines to create what is in my mind a flawless zombie horror comedy. Whereas last week's flick was probably the greatest zombie horror film of all time, this week could well lay claim to being the greatest zombie horror comedy of all time. So that was Return of the Living Dead, a movie based on a book that is a direct sequel to a movie that had already spawned its own hugely influential and successful film franchise. So they went in an entirely different direction with it, and in my mind it is as equally successful in that endeavour, and I highly recommend you watch it. So if you enjoyed that video please give it a like, let me know down in the comments what you think of Return of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, whatever, just let me know how you're going. If you want to see more videos then maybe subscribe because next week maybe we're going to have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the Goonies, or Tremors. I don't know, it's probably going to be something entirely different to even that, because I haven't decided yet.